Good day and uh, Merry Christmas. We are going to discuss different types of COVID-19 vaccine. And I will discuss with you how those vaccines work, what are the vaccines that are already approved, and what is the plan for the vaccination throughout the world. So I am Dr. Teke Apalata, a clinical microbiologist. Now, <clears throat> COVID-19 vaccine type and how they work. So two things that we are going to discuss in this presentation, we will look at all different uh, vaccine types and the way they work so that we can understand that. And we will then look at the approved vaccine and the plan, uh, the vaccination plan throughout the world. So first, let's try to build our understanding regarding the COVID-19 or vaccine types, okay? We know that the COVID-19 vaccine will help our bodies develop immunity against the SARS-CoV-2, that is the virus that causes COVID-19, okay? So, so far we have different types of vaccine and those different types of vaccine that have been developed, what happened is that uh, they work in different ways to offer protection. But one thing in common is what they do is that uh, it, depending on the method, but all it happened at the end is that we end up having memory T cells and memory B cells who are able to remember how to fight the virus if they are exposed um, against that virus in the future. Okay, I will give you details on how our body happened to develop to build memory T cells and memory B cells, you know. But some of the things that one of the things we need to remember is that it takes a few weeks for the body to produce those T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes after vaccination. So it's not like immediately when you receive the vaccine, you can become protected. No, it takes time. It takes a couple of weeks for, you to, for your body to start building uh, immunity and to make you um, ready to resist infection. So what does it mean? It means that it is possible that a person could be infected with the virus before or just after vaccination and be able to get sick because the vaccine did not yet have enough time, you know, to provide protection. So it's not like because you got a vaccine today and tomorrow already you can be protected. You know, it takes time. You know, it takes a couple of weeks for you to develop uh, uh, immunity. So sometimes after vaccination, the process of building immunity can cause certain symptoms. And the most important one that has been shown in different clinical trials has been fever. So you can develop fever and that's normal. Don't fear the vaccine because of those immediate side effects because those symptoms are normal. And they only, they simply mean that your body is building immunity, okay? So you don't need to be afraid of uh, those symptoms. So let, let, let me just explain here, okay? Those two things. So what I'm trying to say is that the vaccine is there to help your body build immunity against the virus. So it doesn't matter the type of vaccine that you are going to use, but at the end, you are going to develop memory T cells and memory B cells. So those are the cells who will keep memory of the virus that they have seen within the vaccine or the antigen that was in the vaccine. So in the future, if it happened that you are exposed to that virus, so those T cells and B cells will remember that I have seen something like this before, let me fight it. Okay, that's one thing. The second thing I'm saying is that when you receive the vaccine, it will take a couple of weeks depending on the vaccine type so that you build immunity. 
So what it means is that if you are exposed to the virus immediately after you receive your shot of vaccine, you might not be protected because you don't have the immune response yet, or it's not enough to protect you. Okay, so those are the things that um, we then need to, 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 to remember when we are, uh, when we are dealing with uh, the vaccine issue. So there are three main types of COVID-19 vaccine, three main types. If you look at all uh, vaccine manufacturer, all different vaccines that are in the pipeline, you will see that they, are, they can be classified in three main types. The first one is the mRNA vaccine. M stands only for messenger, messenger RNA. And the RNA is the nucleic acid that we found in the virus that caused COVID, you know? So it is a RNA virus. And the messenger RNA is that type of RNA that carries the information about the protein that need to be developed, okay? So the antigen that they put in that vaccine molecule, it's the messenger RNA. So it carries the information about the protein and the protein that it carries the information of, it's called the spike protein. Now, what is the spike protein? The spike protein is the protein that allow the virus to attach with our host cells in order to cause an infection. So they take the messenger RNA, they put in that vaccine carrier, then once you receive that vaccine, it means that you have a messenger RNA in you. It carries the information about developing a spike protein, okay? Then once there is a first protein, first spike protein is developed, then whenever our cells replicate, there are also copies, millions of copies of that protein that are also um, uh, they are also being replicated. Then after that, the initial genetic material, the messenger RNA that was introduced will then be destroyed. So you only remain with uh, those kind of protein, that spike protein. Then what will happen is that our body will then recognize that spike protein because that spike protein is normally what is found in the virus. Now it's in you by means of the, uh, the vaccine you received. So our body will recognize it as um, a foreign, as a foreign, then it will then uh, develop uh, T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte against it, okay? Then those T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes will be developed against that. They will then keep that information in their memories. Those cells will then keep the information in their memories so that the next time when you become infected for real or you are exposed for the virus now for real, your T cells and B cells have that information in their memory. They already know how to fight you know, that virus how to fight that virus. Uh, let me make this much more clear. We have the messenger RNA um, vaccine type. So in the virus, in the virus, inside the virus, there is a nucleic acid called the RNA. And the RNA has, there is a specific RNA that we call a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is the RNA that carries the information about the type of protein that the virus want to make, okay? In this situation, the messenger RNA carries the information about the spike protein. The spike protein is a protein that the virus develop because it allows the virus to penetrate our cells. Now, the manufacturer developed that vaccine by putting the messenger RNA in to carry the information about the spike protein. So once you have the vaccine, you get your shot of the vaccine, okay? Then the vaccine has a messenger RNA that carries the protein information. That protein will then uh, be formed. Then every time that your cells develop, replicate, that protein also replicates until 
your body will then identify that protein as a foreign and develop immunity, T cells and B cells against that protein. And those immune cells will then remain there just in case you become infected or you become, you are in contact with a virus, with someone who is sick, then those cells will be able to immediately fight, immediately fight uh, that virus. So that's how the messenger RNA vaccine work, okay? Now, let's look at some few facts about the messenger RNA vaccine. The mRNA vaccine do not use live virus that cause COVID-19. So this is a wrong information. If they say that this, you are going to, you can get this, it's like they want to inject you a virus. No, it's just a nucleic acid of the virus that carries the information about a specific type of protein. So it does not use live virus, okay? That's one. Secondly, the messenger RNA never enters the nucleus of our cells, our human cells. It's not be, it's not able to penetrate into our nucleus. Okay, so it will not be able to interfere now or in the future with our DNA, our genetic material. So that's impossible. It will not happen. The third thing is that the cell, our cell break down and get rid of the messenger RNA once the protein has, are formed, once the initial protein are formed, our cells are able to destroy that messenger RNA and get rid of that. And number four, the messenger RNA vaccine can be new, but they are not unknown. So they have been, that technology has been developed while developing the flu vaccine or the Zika vaccine or the rabies and the CMV, you know, cytomegalovirus vaccine. So they used already messenger RNA type of vaccine before. So it's not something we have to worry about. It's a technology that was already known. And examples of vaccine that are using the messenger RNA type of vaccine is the Pfizer vaccine that is already approved now in all European countries. And we have also the Moderna vaccine that is also approved in all European countries. And they are also approved for emergency use in USA and in UK. So those vaccines use the messenger RNA vaccine, they are messenger RNA vaccine type, the vaccine from Pfizer and Moderna, okay? The second type of vaccine is what we call the protein subunit vaccine. The protein subunit vaccine, this again, it's a vaccine that contains a very harmless piece of the virus that is actually a protein, the actual protein. Remember the messenger RNA one, you have a messenger RNA that carries the information of generating a protein. But in this subunit vaccine, you already have a piece of protein that is in that vaccine that you are going to receive, you know? And um, so it already contain that protein. So once vaccinated, then our immune cells will recognize that this protein is a foreign, then they will build both T uh, lymphocyte and B uh, lymphocyte that are the antibodies against that, uh, uh, that, that new proteins. So just in a case we are ever infected in the future, then our, the memory cells of the T and the B cells will then recognize and quickly uh, get rid of the virus. An example of a protein subunit vaccine, it's actually the Russian Vector Institute vaccine that is already um, authorized just for early use in Russia. It's only for early use and it's limited for use for now in, in Russia. So the third type of a vaccine is what we call the vector vaccine. The vector vaccine contains a weakened version of a live virus. Okay, so this one is now a live virus, but they suppressed it. They made it very weak. They remove, they, they destroy some of its virulent factors. So, uh, so then they, they take it, they then insert it into a different virus. Uh, so, so, it, uh, so, you, so you have a different virus like, um, um, 
Uh, we, we, you, they, they use a different virus, like a, an adenovirus, you know, an adenovirus. They take an adenovirus that does not cause infected in humans, but adenovirus cause the kind of adenovirus that cause infection in uh, monkeys, in chimpanzees, okay? They use that adenovirus. So it's a live virus that become attenuated. Then they take the genetic material of the COVID-19, they insert into that virus, okay? They insert into that virus uh, to, to, to carry it. So once the viral vector, the viral vector that is like your adenovirus that is known to cause infection in animals is, becomes inside our cells, then the genetic material that was inserted in that virus, the genetic material from the, the virus that caused uh, COVID gives instruction to make a protein that is unique to the virus. And uh, thereafter, we also have uh, protein that are developed. So let me just uh, explain this again, okay? So <clears throat> the vector virus, it's actually a virus, um, that causes infection in uh, animals like chimpanzees and monkeys, okay? So they take that virus, they attenuate it, they make it, it's a live virus, but they make it weak, okay? Then they take the genetic material from the virus that caused COVID, they incorporate it in that live virus. So that's what you find in the vaccine, okay? That's what you find in the vaccine. Then once you receive a shot of the vaccine, you are given the vaccine, that nucleic material will then make our body stimulate immune cells, you know, to develop T and B cells that will then be able to fight the virus whenever it happens that we, we, we become uh, uh, exposed or infected uh, with the, the virus. So, an example of this uh, type of uh, vaccine is uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine that uses adenovirus. So this adenovirus is typically able to cause uh, cold in chimpanzees, okay? So they genetically alter the virus so that it carries a gene that encode for some of the coronavirus proteins, okay? And this type of vaccine is also the adenova, other adenovirus-based uh, vaccine are also the one that are tested by Johnson Johnson, as well as the one uh, tested in China and Italy. Most of the Chinese vaccine and the Italian vaccine are actually adenovirus-based vaccine where they use a live virus, a different virus called adenovirus, attenuated, they take a gene from the coronavirus they put in, then when you have that virus in your body, it will then uh, uh, stimulate our cells to build uh, um, antibodies against uh, coronavirus. Now, let's look at the leading COVID-19 vaccines that are there. So the first two are already approved. We have the Pfizer, uh, that is already approved, Moderna, that is already approved. And the, the two use a messenger RNA type of vaccine and they all completed the phase three and they are already approved. And this Sunday, uh, 27 December, all European countries, especially the 27 bloc countries will start using this vaccine. Okay, then we have the Oxford AstraZeneca that is a denovirus type of vaccine. The phase three is almost completed. Data are made available. They are being reviewed, but they are still pending approval. Then we have the Johnson Johnson that is also in a denovirus. It's in phase three. We have the, uh, the Gamalea that is in a denovirus. It's a Russian virus. It's at phase three, but it's already authorized for early use in Russia only. We have the CanSino that is also an adenovirus. It's in phase three. It's limited for use in China. It's a Chinese molecule. And we have another Russian um, uh, vaccine that is also at phase three. That is a protein uh, based vaccine that is authorized for early use in Russia. 
So if you if you you have uh, issues understanding the vaccine development process to know what is phase one, phase two, phase three, and preclinical phases, I have a lecture that I did on uh, vaccine development phases that you can refer to, and it's just here in our our system, our channel that you can check. Now, other phase three vaccine, uh, we have uh, many other phase three vaccine. We have like uh, the Novavax, that is a protein-based vaccine. We have the Sinovac that is uh, inactivated, limited use in China. And we have other Chinese vaccine like the Sinopharm Beijing and the Sinopharm Wuhan that, uh, that are also the other Chinese-based uh, uh, vaccine. So the vaccine that are approved so far, we have Pfizer that is approved and they already manufactured 25, for, uh, they manufactured uh, doses for 25 million people. Remember that the Pfizer vaccine uses two doses. So if they made for 25 million people, it means that uh, they did almost 50 million doses because one person will receive two injections at a, a separate period of time. You know, and the Pfizer vaccine is fully approved by European countries. And on the 27 December 2020, this coming Sunday, all those 27 European countries, bloc countries, will kickstart the use of the Pfizer vaccine. Okay, they are already being dispatched in different European countries for use. Then we have also the Moderna vaccine that is also approved, it, is, it works in the same way as the Pfizer vaccine, and they already manufactured about uh, doses to be used for 10 million people have been released. So they are also uh, very effective. Then um, we then uh, have uh, AstraZeneca that is uh, developed from the Oxford. It's uh, awaiting approval awaiting approval and they say that they will they are planning to manufacture almost 100 million doses for 100 million people okay so and this vaccine is said to be almost 90 percent effective okay so in the us uh, so the european countries are already um, organized to start vaccinating uh, this Sunday, and the, the US Department of Defense and the CDC will manage the distribution in the USA, and the UK health authorities is also planning the rollout of this vaccine in UK. Okay. So, but the question is then, uh, what about the developing countries? When are we expecting to get the vaccine in uh, developing countries? Okay. So the, there is a plan. The good news is that there is a plan for developing countries. So we have COVAX, that is a program led by the World Health Organization and the Gavi Vaccine Group. They already raised the fund. They raised almost 2 billion euros, you know? And they raised that money from uh, other wealthy countries and the nonprofit organization to buy vaccine and distribute uh, those vaccine to poorer, the poor of the poor of the countries. Okay, so they are going to distribute those vaccines. So the WHO and the Gavi vaccine group, they raise the money, they will purchase the vaccine. And it's high likely that they are going to buy from AstraZeneca. Okay, the plan is that uh, they are going to get the AstraZeneca's vaccine. Okay, the AstraZeneca's vaccine, not the Pfizer one that is used in Europe, but we are going to get the AstraZeneca's vaccine. Okay, and uh, their target is that uh, they are going to vaccinate almost three to 20% of people, you know. So they reached that um, uh, uh, provisional agreement with uh, AstraZeneca. But what are the reasons, guys? Let's not try to, 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 to see everything as uh, political, okay? Because here we don't want people to start thinking, oh, now the European are receiving vaccine from Pfizer. 
okay? But now they are bringing AstraZeneca as one for uh, poor countries. The reason, the simple reason is this, okay? There are at least two main reasons. One is that the AstraZeneca vaccine, you know, is the easiest one to store because you, you just need a, a cooler box with ices, okay? You need a cooler box with ices or uh, you, you need a small fridge to keep it at two, between two to eight degrees. You need a fridge, a small fridge. But the Pfizer and the Moderna one, that are messenger RNA-based vaccine, they need to be transported at below freezing temperature. So you need a freezer at minus 70. That make it difficult for use in developing countries. We have electricity problem, we have no power. In many poor countries, the cold um, chain is very difficult to maintain, okay? So that's one reason why it is high likely that the WHO is going to purchase the AstraZeneca vaccine for, um, for the poor countries. And the other argument is that it is also the cheapest. Let's face it, this vaccine here, this technology used by AstraZeneca makes the vaccine cost very cheap. One dose is about three to four dollars, US dollars, you know, one dose is three to four uh, dollars. But if you take the Pfizer, is twenty dollars. If you want to look at in the South African money, South African money, one dollar is 15 rand. So twenty dollars times 15 is about 300 rand per dose, 300, 300, yes, 300 rand per dose. That is very expensive, you know, and you need two doses. So per person, you need to spend 600 rand, okay? But the Pfizer one is $3. So $3, it's uh, uh, 45 rand, 45 rand, okay? only 45 rand per person. So it's cheaper as compared to Pfizer. And the Moderna is even more expensive than the Pfizer one in 32 to $37, okay? Even many European countries, they are using Pfizer, okay? So, and uh, other less wealthy countries, okay? The poor of the poor will receive uh, this uh, donation from the WHO, okay? They raised 2 billion. Uh, euros to purchase vaccine for poor countries and uh, other less wealthy countries in Africa, South East Asia and Latin America here, I can see like uh, South Africa, like uh, Brazil and so on. They will then uh, be allowed to make a contribution to purchase the vaccine at a lower cost, you know, uh, at a lower cost under the WHO program under the WHO program. So they will be allowed to, to purchase the vaccine at a lower cost, you know, through the WHO program. So this is the plan that is um, uh, well made, well established, so that both rich and poor countries, they will uh, receive the vaccine and, uh, you know, so that the world can be protected against this pandemic. So. Thank you very much for following this lecture and goodbye for now.